Hi, and welcome to this last video in our short introduction to Python programming. In this video, we are going to be looking at lists, and we use lists to store multiple items of data. Um, so we're going to learn about that first of all. We're then going to look at how to use a for loop to access all of the items in a list. And we're also going to look at how do we use um, a random choice function in order to pick a random item out of a list. So let's go straight into Replit and start a new Python REPL. Now we've looked already at how we can use a variable in order to store uh, a single item of data. For example, I could have somebody's name equals Bob and their age could be 23. Um, but often we want to be able to store multiple items of data. For example, if I had um, several different names or several different ages that I wanted to store, um, then I might have a problem here because I can only store one age at a time in my variable called age. So I could store that and then overwrite it later, or I could have lots of variables. So I could have maybe name two equals Jane, and age two equals, I don't know, 20, name three, etc. But very quickly, you'll soon, you know, hopefully discover that this is starting to look really quite messy. And we've got the problem that we always need to make sure that the names and the ages are always sort of linked up somehow. So this isn't really ideal. And if I was storing the data for, say, a whole football team, or even worse, maybe a whole school, you can see that I would need hundreds of different variables for every different attribute that I wanted to store. So it's it's really not a great way of doing it. There must be a better way. And that is where lists come in. Because lists allow me to store multiple pieces of data under one single variable. So let's say I wanted to represent all of the items I had in a bag. Let's pretend this is a, a game. Um, we can start off with a sensible variable name such as bag and then equals because we're going to assign a value to that variable. And now when we use lists, we need to use square brackets. So the square brackets key is just, um, those keys are just to the left of the enter key on the keyboard. So we're going to use square brackets. And inside the square brackets, we put each of the individual items of data that we want to store in our list. And they're all separated by a comma. And we can put anything in here, strings, booleans, integers, floats, it doesn't matter. Um, but I'm going to stick with strings. I'm going to have um, some different things I might have in my bag. So let's pretend it's an adventure game and I might have a few things like a torch. Uh, so I need a comma to separate them. Maybe I have a map. Maybe I have some water. Uh, maybe I have a match. So those could be the items in my bag. So this is how we set it out in Python. We have the variable name equals, and then in square brackets, each of the items in the list, and we use a comma to separate each item. Now let's say that I want to print out each of the items in my bag. I could say print in my bag I have, and then I can now use a for loop that is going to loop over every item in the list, printing each item out. To do that, I use for, and then a variable, which is going to be, uh, is going to contain each item in the list. So it could be anything I like. I could call it item because it seems sensible. Uh, and then I can use the keyword in, and then the name of the list where all my items are found. So for item in bag, colon, print item. And this for loop is going to run for as many times as there are things in the list called bag. And for each thing in that list, each time the value of item, which is just a variable, is going to be updated to be the next item in the list. So let's run this and see what happens. In my bag, I have torch, map, water, match. So it's time for your first task. For this task, I want you to create a list called names and then add the names of some family members or friends to that list. Then I want you to write um, code that uses a for loop to print out all of the names in your list. Having seen how to create a list and how to use a for loop to print out all of the items in the list, very often you will want to access a specific item in a list. So. Let's just imagine we've got a list called friends 
that contains the values Ross, Joey, Chandler, Rachel, Monica and Phoebe. Friends, in this case, is a reference um, to the start of the list in memory. So we've got a variable friends and if we looked inside our computer and we saw what friends was storing, it would be storing a memory location where this list begins. Each of the items in the list has its own index value, which starts at zero for the first item. So Ross is index zero, Joey is index one, Chandler is index two, and so on. And the reason it starts at zero is because that index value is actually an offset, or it's how many places away from the start of the list. So if you think about it, Ross is the start of the list, so that index is zero because it's no spaces away from the start of the list. But Joey has an index of one because it's one place away from the start of the list. Now, if we want to access an individual item from the list, we need these two things. We need the name of the variable that stores the list, so in this case, friends, and we need the index value for the item that we want. And we can use that in a bit of code. So here I've got an example where I'm saying I'm going to have a new variable called one friend, which is equal to the value found in the friends list at index three. In other words, the fourth item in the list. And then if I print that new value, it will print the fourth item in the list, in this case, Rachel. So let's have another look at that in Replit. So here I am once again with my bag list. And if I wanted to print uh, the second item in my bag, I could do print bag, which is the name of the list, square brackets because I'm gonna access the inside of the list. And then remember the second item would be index one. And if I just run that code, it should print out map. Now let's imagine we want to get a bit more interactive and actually allow the user to specify um, the number of the item in the list that they want to see. Or again, if this was in a game, it might be the one they want to use. So let's get rid of what we've got here. And uh, let's think, how are we going to do this? Well, we need to use the input function. And we know that when we use the input function, we need a variable to store what the user has typed in. So let's say um, item number equals input. And we could say something like, which item do you want to use? Enter a number between one and four. And um, I'm even going to put special little new line and a prompt to make it look a bit nicer as they type in. Okay, so let's just run that and see how that works. Here we go, which items do you want to use? Enter a number between one and four, put in a two. Nothing happens because we haven't written any further code. Now, if you remember correctly, um, input always returns values as strings, but our indexes, they were proper numbers, they were integers, so we're going to need to convert what we've received from input into an integer. So to do that, we can just do item number equals int item number. And now we're going to want to um, print the item from the list that corresponds to that number. So let's have a look at that. Let's do um, print maybe using plus bag, because that's the, where we get the items from. That's the name of the list square brackets because we're going into the list and then we can just specify item number. Now let's see what happens when we run this. Which item do I want to use? So torch is one, map is two, water is three, match is four. So let's say we want to use the map so I'll enter two. Ah now it's saying using water. Now can you understand why? Hopefully you've worked it out. Remember that the indexes start at zero, not one. So item two is actually zero, one, two. It's the third item in the list. How can we fix this? Well, all we need to do is inside our square brackets say whatever the user's typed in, which is item number, minus one. 
And that minus one is a common thing that you'll see when accessing values inside lists, precisely because of this zero indexing that they use. Let's run this again. Which item do you want to use? I'll put two again, and this time it should show map. Using map. There you go. Time for your second task. And for this task, you're going to create a sort of lucky dip program. So I want you to create your own bag list that contains five items. I want some of those to be good and some of them bad. Then ask the user to enter a number between one and five and tell them the corresponding item along with an appropriate message depending on whether that item is a good or bad one. Now for this to work, you're going to need to remember about that zero indexing of the array and the need to subtract one from whatever they type in. You'll also need to use an if an else statement in order to test whether the item number that they've typed in corresponds to a good or bad thing and then print an appropriate message. If you want to really push yourself, you could add some additional code to check that the number that they've entered is indeed between one and five and show a friendly error message if it isn't. Without that, if someone types a number that isn't between one and five, you'll see your program crash in a rather unpleasant red font. Let's look now at choosing random items from a list. So here I am back in REPL and I've got my bag list again and I want to print a random item from this list. Now to do that I'm actually going to have to put some code before the code that creates my my list and I'm going to put import random now you might remember this from the turtle stuff we've done before, but random is a library of functions, loads and loads and loads of different functions, all to do with random numbers. And from this, we can actually choose to use uh, the random.choice method. So we could say item equals random.choice, and this is a function, so I have to put brackets around it, and I'm gonna pass into this function a reference to my list which in this case is the variable bag. So I'm going to say I'm going to have an item variable and it's going to be assigned the value, get a random thing from the bag. And then I can print that. I can say your randomly selected item is, and then I can add what the item is. So let's run that and see if it works. Your randomly selected item is, the match. Okay, let's run it again. Your randomly selected item is torch. Your randomly selected item is match again, torch again, water, torch, torch, water, and so on. So you can see it is randomly selecting items from my list. Now, we're going to have a bit of fun with this, and we're going to go back to the 80s. Now, back in the 80s, or possibly even earlier, actually, there was this thing called a magic eight ball. And this was basically a black uh, sphere that you could sh ask a question and you'd shake it. And eventually it would settle and present some kind of generic fortune teller statement on the screen. So in this case, something like, as I see it, yes. You could ask it things like, will I be rich one day? Um, will we have pizza for dinner? And it would say things like, it seems unlikely, or maybe so, or whatever it might be. So we're going to have a bit of fun and create our own magic eight ball game. So let me show you how to get started, and then you are going to finish it off. So we need a list that's going to store our uh, responses. So let's call it responses equals, and then an empty list. And let's put inside this empty list some options. So, as I see it, yes. And how about um, maybe so? Um, it seems unlikely. And those will do for now, but in a moment you're going to add a few more of those. We then need to allow the user to ask a question. So we might say something like question equals input. Um, what is your question? And again, I could put that on a new line and a little prompt character. 
and it doesn't actually matter what they type in. So I didn't need to put question equals. I could have just got rid of that and just said input because we're not really going to use their, um, their data for anything. But, you know, it's good form to always remember that we're going to, whenever we have input, it returns a value. So for the sake of reinforcing that, it's worth including. So if I just run this now, it says, what is your question? And I can say, will I be rich one day, question mark, enter. At which point, I want my magic eight ball to print a randomly chosen statement from this list. So we could say, print magic eight ball says, and I want you to do the rest. So for your third task, you need to create your own Magic 8-Ball game that allows users to ask a question and then provides a random answer from a list of potential options. Now I gave you three different options, I want you to have at least six options. And once they've typed in their question, your Magic 8-Ball should pick one of those responses and show it on the screen. If you want to stretch yourselves, then I want you to use a while loop so that users can keep asking questions and they keep getting randomly chosen responses every time the loop goes round. And that process of asking a question, getting a response, asking a question, getting a response can continue indefinitely until the user enters the word stop, at which point the loop should not run any longer and the program can end. So we're on to our final part of this lesson and we're going to learn how to make a joke bot. So this is like a chat bot that will allow people to um, interact with it to tell knock knock jokes. Now just in case there's someone out there who doesn't know what a knock knock joke is, here's an example. Person A says knock knock. Person B, the responder, always says who's there? Person A says whatever the punch of the p a person is, so in this case little old lady, Person B says, little old lady who, so the format is they always say um, the name of the person and then who, and then person A replies with the punchline, I didn't know you could yodel. If you don't get that, just say little old lady who a couple of times. So to keep our program organized nicely and to put some good structure into it, I'm going to use a subroutine to get my random combination of um, person and punchline. So if you remember, subroutines are always defined before they're used using the def keyword and then the name of the subroutine. So we can say get person and punchline and we always have brackets and a colon. And now inside my subroutine, I'm gonna need um, a list of persons and punchline combos. So let's call that PP combos and that's going to be equal to a list. And I'm going to show you something new now. I'm going to show you a different way of adding things to a list. So I'm going to say ppcombos.append. Now append is a function and it means join on to the end. So I'm going to join on to the end of my ppcombos list some data. And the data I'm going to append on the end or I'm going to add to the list is itself a list which is going to contain the person and the punchline. So let's do little old lady and the punchline is I didn't know you could yodel. So that's one combination of a person and a punchline added to my combos list. Let's add another one. A um, bit of a classic coming up here, doctor and then they're going to say Doctor Who, and you're going to say, how did you know? And let's add one more, combos, let's append, um, cow says, or even better, cows say, and you're going to say, cow say who, and then the punchline will be, no, cows say moo. It's a great joke. Okay, so I've now got inside my subroutine a list called PP Combos, which is an empty list. So I used the square brackets, but I didn't put anything in it. And then I've got these three lines of code. Hang on, let me just stretch that so it's obviously three lines. Um, I've got 
This line of code adds this combination, little old lady and I didn't know you could yodel. This line adds doctor and how did you know? And this line adds cow says and no cow says moo. We then need to, in our subroutine, we need to pick one of these at random and return it back to the part of the program that asked for it. So we can do a selected combo is equal to random dot choice. Notice I'm still using random, so I've got it imported up here. Random dot choice, pick a random choice from my person punchline combo list. Okay, and then I'm going to return, new keyword, return that selected combo. Okay, so that's a whole new subroutine in my program that every time I call it or ask for it, it will be able to provide me with a person and a punchline for my joke bot. And now I just need to write the code that is going to actually allow the user to kind of interact with this. So let's start it off. Let's uh, put something like um, jokebot3000 and a nice little header. Um, and then we're going to start it off. So how do we start these? Well, we start with knock knock. Print knock knock. And the user can type something in. So input and we'll just give them a little prompt to encourage them to type. It doesn't matter what they type, we don't really care, so I'm not gonna save the response to a variable. And then we print, what do we print? Well, we actually need to print, because um, they're gonna write who's there, so we need to now print the first part of our combo. So actually, before I can print anything, I need to get a combo, don't I? So let me do that, let's get a combo. So let's do pp, as in person and punchline, is equal to get person punchline, bracket, bracket. This line of code means I'm going to have a variable called pp, and I'm going to assign to it the value that's returned by this subroutine. And as we know, that's going to be a randomly chosen combination of a person and a punchline. So pp is going to be that random punchline. So let's now print. I want to print the person. Well, how do we print that? Well, it's the first item in a list. So, and the list is going to be called PP. So PP is the name of the list. Square brackets, because I'm going into the list. And zero, because I'm now accessing the first item in the list. Let's just run that, not go any further. Let's run that and check it works. Jokebot 3000, knock, knock, I'll say. Who's, oops, spell that wrong. Who's there, question mark. Press enter, doctor. And at this point, the user now should say, uh, doctor who, and then the computer should reply with the punchline. So that's what you need to do to finish off the joke bot 3000. So for our final task then, the show what you know task, you need to create your own knock knock joke bot that can randomly select a particular person punchline combination from a list of combinations and then present the joke step by step to the user, allowing the user to type in their responses to each part of the joke. I've shown you how to get started, you need to finish it off. Uh, just like my program, you should use a function subroutine to obtain that randomly selected person punchline combo. And a few hints for you, you do not need to check or do anything based on the user's input. Just give them the impression that you're listening to them. And um, if you're struggling to come up with some knock-knock jokes, there are loads of lists of them online. And the more that you add into your subroutine, uh, the more fun your joke bot will be because obviously it will be able to produce uh, more and more jokes at random. Finally, you might want to add a loop so that your joke bot keeps on delivering new jokes until the user asks not to do it anymore. So maybe when you've shown a joke, you might want to say, would you like to see another joke? Yes or no? And if they enter yes, do it all again. If they say no, then stop and say goodbye.